Alright everyone, welcome to my first episode of the Zono podcast or the Zono cast or the Zono show. I don't know how I'm going to call this, but basically I'm giving a try to the podcast format that is getting very popular on YouTube and on other uh, different media. And today guys, I want to talk about a few topics that aren't really possible in my channel because I mostly do gameplays and videos where I talk about news and I feel like podcast is a good format for what I want to talk about today. So why don't you guys sit back, relax, or put this video uh, on somewhere that doesn't disturb you so you can work and let's let's get right into a conversation. If you guys want to react to it, feel free to tweet at me uh, or post comment down below. Uh, I would love to hear your feedbacks about this format and how you guys are liking it. And if I suck, please let me know how I can uh, do this better for the next episode. So basically, guys, um, I want to go back a few days and talk about the International 2017. If you don't know what that is, it's Dota 2 uh, World Championship, I want to say. Like the most uh, anticipated uh, world international scaled event. I think everybody knows it. I mean, if you guys are a gamer or like you follow esports, I'm pretty sure you know about the international. And I'm not going to talk about the international as like the event, but I'm going to talk about something that happened, which is the intervention of uh, something called OpenAI. So I'm going to tell you a little bit what OpenAI is, and then we're going to come back to the international. So what, if you don't know what OpenAI is, it's a startup that was uh, started by. Elon Musk, Elon Musk, uh, founder of PayPal, Tesla Motors, SpaceX, uh, Soro CD, like crazy startup. The guy is a billionaire philanthropist, super smart guy. And he founded OpenAI to gather a team of developers and basically build the the strongest, smartest AI ever possible. So the started startup, the, the startup, the startup started, <laughs> the startup started with uh with like a robot that was aimed to be the number one uh, player of chess so the robot will just learn the moves and how to never make mistakes in chess to eventually be the number one player uh, I think it was it was last summer or like last year or something like that it doesn't matter and when that happened it almost was like okay now that we did that our next milestone would be to teach our AI to play dota 2 and like yeah and just face one on one the biggest player of Dota 2 and see what happens can the AI learn can the AI last hit can the AI do all those things so the reason why it's Dota 2 and not League of Legends which could be a good question from your part is that Dota 2 is a much more complicated game than League of Legends in a matter of that it has so much more to it some people might say too much to it some people might say okay it's just a harder game and to be honest guys just a side note i don't think there's a war or like some clash between league of legends players and dota 2 players uh i first of all league of legends comes from the dota mode of warcraft 3 and people that used to work at blizzard for warcraft 3 now works at rare games it's the same type of game. It's I don't think it's the same one as like PS4, Xbox, console, PC stuff. Uh, just the clash of community, and it's it's very fair to admit that Dota 2 is just a more elaborated, complicated game, and there's just more to it. So the challenge is really is just way bigger than if an AI would would have learned like League of Legends. So what Elon Musk wanted to do is basically build this AI, be like, okay, this AI is going to be the best Dota 2 player on one-on-one, -on -one, and it's basically going to beat the faker of Dota 2, which uh, is like some player like uh, Somai, I think Somai, the guy who won last year at International, Dandy, one of the most, uh, I want to say the face of Dota 2, but I'm not sure about that statement, but he he was he's super popular, I think he won one of the first The International in 2015 or 14, so he's very popular, and I mean, without any surprise, I want to say, or, I mean, like, the thing is that the way AI works is that once they learn something, it's like it's literally like if your brain was tailored to learn from its mistake from the the second you do your mistake. So let's say you miss the last hit or you miss something or blah blah blah. Like you will just never do the mistake again. Your AI, your brain will learn instantly and that's it. And once you delete all the, the mistakes you can do, you're pretty much invincible. So I'm not saying the AI was perfect, like it did some mistake, but when you see what happened and during the Dota 2 event, 
It was winning in deny, it was winning in farming, and it just killed the professional player in front of it all the time. And if you guys don't know, or if you guys have experienced it, but I don't know if you are if you played once or twice against a scripter, what we call a scripter on League of Legends, but it pretty much feels like that for the professional gamer that plays against OpenAI. Uh, if you play against a scripter, like none, like the the millisecond you launch your spell, your skill shot, you will see the 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 champion in front of you moving, and it is super super impressive. So a script is obviously a word of cheats that, that some people use, but an AI is actually some someone that it doesn't exist, right? It's a robot, and it just learns the the second you launch a spell to just go in an opposite direction, predicting. Uh, where the spell is going to go, etc., etc. So, as much as it can be frustrating when you play against a scripter, that's how that's a good example of what the AI must feel like when you're playing against it. So, why one of the biggest questions you guys may ask is, what's the point of that? Like, what's the point of AI, having an AI in esports? So, I don't think AI in esports is going to be a big deal. I don't think that Elon Musk is just doing open AI to enhance esports stuff like that. But I thought it was an amazing topic because, first of all, the fact that Elon Musk talks about esports, I think it's really good for the industry. And I think Elon Musk did in an interview, uh, he talked about how he liked playing Overwatch and stuff like that. So all that stuff is very beneficial to our industry. I mean, it's like if Steve Jobs were saying, I think Steve Jobs and Elon Musk are in the same level. Like, to be honest, like, or maybe like they're becoming at the same level. But it's like if Elon Musk was saying, oh, yo, League of Legends is really cool, we want to build like a gaming iPad or a gaming PC for it, whatever. Like, it would be super, super, super amazing, right? The, the way I see it, for for the OpenAI stuff, the, the, the end of the roadmap for, for the company, I don't know where it's going to go, but I'm pretty sure that AI can control anything that make your life easier, like do your dishes, like just control your house, control an entire city, control an entire, like even the earth itself. Maybe an AI will control the earth with like the temperature, I don't, like some crazy shit like that can happen, right? I don't think that's very impossible to think about, and I'm pretty sure Elon Musk is, uh, he's smart enough to know where this can go. I just want to talk in this podcast about the esport uh, side of it and how anyone can benefit it, uh, beneficiate from it. So let's say tomorrow, guys, you wake up and you're offered to play against Faker. So I don't know where you are right now. Let's say you're an average gamer, you're an average League of Legends player, you're like Gold 5 or something, Gold 3. And tomorrow, right, hits you up. It's like, yo, you want to play against Faker for like a whole day? Uh, let's say you're a mid laner, right? You're like, you play against Faker the whole day. Imagine how much better you'll be from the first game you do against Faker to the last game you do against Faker. And I think this is what I thought that would be so interesting, is that even if you're an average gamer, if you play against the best player in the world, you might not learn a lot at first, because obviously he's going to stomp you, he's going to like humiliate you, but I think that one of the reasons people don't progress is that they're always matched against people that suck as much as them, right? So you're gold, you're going to be matched with golds, and etc, etc. But... I feel like when I started playing League of Legends and I was like, I was just hitting level 30, I was playing in a LAN cafe where there was like already uh, people with like 2,000 plus ELO, if you guys remember in season 2, season 1, and they were pretty much Diamond, Diamond when Challenger didn't exist, when Master didn't exist, and that was like, that was really, really impressive. And the fact that in this line cafe we used to play pre mains where we would just uh, do 5v5s uh, and we became all friends and it was awesome. The fact that I went from being at level 30 to playing against diamond players, players that were way better than me, is that at first you you just suck, right? Like you literally suck. Like you, you, you feel like they're playing a different game. You feel like the auto attack are doing more damage than yours for some reason. You just feel like powerless. But the more you play and the more you do mistakes and the more you are willing to learn from them, you got, your progression rate is going through the roof. So, that is for the average player, right? So, your gold, you play against Faker, you play 20 games against him, 1v1, uh, Syndra against Syndra, or like Lux against Lux, or LeBlanc against LeBlanc, or whatever matchup you can think of. At the end of the day, you will become so much better. You will make more progress in a day than you ever made in like two seasons. 
And I think it's such an interesting point in, in the esports side of thing. Is that today we have professional gamers that uh, are struggling to find screaming uh, opponent. They, they have to move to Korea uh, to do some training, to play against better players than in their region. And if you get an AI, and this is what Elon Musk is trying to do. Like now that he did one AI, he wants to do five AI that play five different champions and that can play a full match of Dota from start to finish. Uh, that would be so much complicated because you have to add the whole like combo, the, ha the whole like ganking, the whole team fighting, like all that stuff needs to be added, right? So that's definitely uh, that's definitely a challenge. And Elon Musk told the OpenAI CEO, or I don't know who told us that, but the guy at the event was like, "The this is the goal for next year. So next international, we should see a full team of AI playing against the full team of professional gamer, which like." for me sounds absolutely insane so for for the professional gamer sale it's like if if like let's say you're tsm right and you get the chance to access this 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 open ai team that you can play against every day all day at 2 a.m at 2 p.m whenever you want it and you keep losing and you keep losing and you keep losing because technically guys think about it as like uh Think about it like in a scale to zero to one, where zero is literally like the guy who sucks, and one is literally the perfect guy. The like the one is like the perfect gamer. So the open AI literally is one, right? Like in a scale of zero to one, open AI becomes one because it doesn't do any mistakes. It aims everything perfectly. It does everything perfectly. Everything is timed. Everything is perfect. You would like when you're like Bjergsen, let's say you're 0 0.9, you play against 0 0.95, like fakers, Korean players, Chinese players, but you never, you never really able to play against uh, people from 0 0.95 to 1 uh, all the time, right? You have to play against people on your region that are as good or as bad as you, and you're pretty much limited. But let's say TSM, like the TSM squad, Bjergsen, etc., etc., they have access to an AI that literally is a 1. The fact that they're gonna play against that, they're, playing, they're gonna play, they're gonna lose, 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 lose. They're gonna be closer to this one faster than you ever know. And the only thing is that everyone is gonna have access to this AI. And once that happening, we're going to see an increase, like a tremendous increase in the level of gameplay that we're going to have in esports. So right now it's Dota 2. Tomorrow it can be League of Legends. After tomorrow it can be CSGO. This is just going to be a learning curve that is going to be absolutely insane, right? So I'm pretty sure the Dota 2 and League of Legends transition is going to be pretty easy, right? But I still think that it's an interesting way to think. Because besides that, I don't see what else can be used in esports. I think it's a cool way for Elon Musk to try sh to try things out. Um, I was about to say try shit out, but like it's okay. We're we're a cool podcast. We can say whatever we want. And I don't see besides the whole training benefit. I don't really see any any other stuff to to think about. To be honest, like it's a huge opportunity for for you guys if you're average gamers and you want to train let's say you want to train a matchup and you want to play against faker like i wish i could play against faker guys you or bjergsen i wish i could play against faker because i think Bjerg faker is just the, the closest player to to like one to the perfect gameplay uh he really does mistakes he's absolutely insane mechanically his game knowledge is absolutely through the roof he's pretty much the perfect mid laner as of right now so, yeah, I just keep imagining, what if I can play against Faker, like, during a whole day? How much better would I be at the end of the day? And this really struck me, and this really gave me the idea of this podcast, is that how how much better are we going to become if we play against AI that are, like, that are, like, super good? So, I don't know if you guys ever played in the scripter, but... Playing is playing. Uh, playing against a scripter can be very frustrating, and that's something I'm super scared of. Because if if someone doesn't do any mistakes, and the thing is impossible to win against, then it's not going to be a lot like. It's not going to be a learning experience if you just keep dying and dying and dying, and the person in front of you is just perfect. Uh, so. And definitely, you're not going to learn on capitalizing on mistakes. And when you play against humans, you also need to be able to know how to capitalize on mistakes because those mistakes are going to happen, whether you're Faker, Bjergsen, or whoever, right? So this is just the only thing I have to think about, is that if you play against a perfect gamer, 
do you actually learn at some point or are you just wasting your time because you know you're going to lose anyway and it can kind of fucked up your mindset? I think that at first you start learning a lot because you, you're trying to mimic what a perfect gamer is, is going to do and when you start mimicking, you start actually progressing and going towards the perfect gameplay, the perfect mechanics, the perfect last hitting, the perfect aiming, the perfect that, this and that. And But eventually I feel like some... At some curves, like you just stop learning because you just keep losing, and you never can really uh, compare that to a human behavior. And and, and th that's why that's why it's so interesting is that we really don't know where this is going. So I I'm looking forward to next year and to see what OpenAI does at the International 2018. If you guys are interested, I would post some link down below of the video that concerns uh, the duel, so you'll see like how OpenAI beats the number one uh, Dota 2 players. It's it's really interesting to see. It's really 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 interesting to watch and just to be like, that is so impressive. Like you literally see pro gamers like they're they're mind fucked by a, a USB card that is plugged into a computer and that is literally destroying someone that has played countless hours on a game to master it and so yeah guys i think it's fascinating go check out the link down below and please guys please 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 uh, let me know what you think of this episode. I really want to be um, some sort of like a podcaster. Maybe I can do this once a month, once every two weeks. Uh, this is really a format that I like when I really want to elaborate myself on a topic that I don't feel like discussing in a five-minute video or a ten-minute video or so. So let me know what you think. Tweet at me at Zonabra. And don't forget to subscribe and like this video if you did. And I'll see you for the next episode, guys. So take care. Have a great day, guys. And... I'll see you for the next one. Cheers.